Hi friends, we are in chapter four and we're looking at section 4.2. We're talking about transformations on the coordinate plane. Here's our vocabulary for today. Now the word transformation you get, right? You already understand that idea of something changing, something um, moving, uh, something being made into something else. And so that idea is fine, but when we talk about it in mathematics, we're often talking about um, transformations within the coordinate plane, right? So what that means is we might start off with a shape, like say this triangle here, and what we can do when we talk about transforming this triangle is we can do a few things, like taking the triangle and literally just, let's see if we can do this so it looks good, moving it from one place to another. That type of transformation Okay, and let me see if we can make this a little bit even more plain. That type of transformation is simply called a translation. So I'm going to define each of these as we go. But what I want you to know is that this is the guy we started with, right? So this is considered the pre-image. Transformation, pre-image, covered. Okay, so the next one is the image the thing that we ended up with after we did a transformation. Reflection is a specific type of transformation and I'll show you what that looks like. Let me get rid of this so I can show you. Okay, I said I was gonna talk about reflection but let's not really quickly. I wanna go back to translation. I'll show you reflection in a minute. So translation is taking that original picture and really, literally translating it anywhere else, moving. Translation is just moving from one place to another. Notice that as I slide it around, this shape doesn't change. So that's a translation. Okay, the other um, word that I wanna talk about is a dilation. So a dilation, would be to make it grow larger or to make it grow smaller. So dilation can also cover something shrinking as well. So dilation is getting larger and smaller. A translation keeps the same size, keeps the integrity of the sides and just moves around on the uh, coordinate plane. The next one is a rotation and it's exactly what you would think. Let's get rid of that. It's exactly what you think. It rotates. Let's see if we can make it rotate. We can rotate around like this. We can rotate over an axis. So we've got rotation. I'm having way too much fun. So now that we've covered those two, let me see if I can draw a dilation. So we've got rotation, dilation, and translation. Let's see if I can draw a reflection. Okay, so this is my attempts at drawing a reflection. So it's kind of like if you imagine wherever you're supposed to reflect, right? You're sometimes supposed to reflect it over a particular axis or a line when we talk about a um, about an image being reflected. And so I'm going to pretend like this is like a mirror and then you look in the mirror, you see yourself kind of flipped. Yeah. So if I were to try to reflect it down here, and I'm telling you my drawing is not as good as I'd like it to be. I'm trying to mirror each of these uh, sides of the triangle. I'd get something like this, maybe like that. All right. So my point is a reflection. In this case, we've got a, reflect, a reflection over the y-axis. You imagine folding the page right on the line that you're reflecting and those two images, the pre-image and the actual image should um, should meet up and should, should be the same. And you'll see a little bit more of that when we do our example. So those are all the types of trans transformations, pre-image, image, reflection, translation, dilation, and rotation. Let's begin some examples. So after that long conversation, let's see if we can determine which what is um, what is the thing that's going on. The, the choices we have is a reflection, translation, dilation, or rotation. And so if we go from this position to this position, hopefully you recognize that this is not a reflection. This is not a translation because the translation keeps its size but and its orientation, right? It is... Um, a dilation. Well, a dilation, you're either going to get something that's going to grow smaller and larger, and a rotation is a twisting of the image. So this is definitely a rotation. 
and immediately looking at B, it makes me feel like this uh, half moon or this uh, quarter moon is staring in the mirror, right? And so you see a reflection of yourself, not a translation, because remember the orientation and the size stays the same, not just the size, but the orientation stays the same, not a dilation, the size changes, not a rotation, there's no twisting. This change in size immediately screams dilation, and remember, when we keep the same shape and just move it around, the orientation being the same, we know that we have a translation. And that's it for example one. So when we're talking about transformations on the coordinate plane, there's a couple things that you can think about. So a reflection we talked about is moving from, is basically being mirrored from one side to another. And what you'll notice here is if you have a point, let's say X, Y, that's here, it's reflection over the X axis would be X negative Y right because it's going to move to exactly the opposite spot or exactly the same distance from the x-axis but on the other side its reflection over the y-axis would be negative x and a positive y a translation is simply adding a little bit to the a um i'm sorry adding a little bit to the x value and adding some to the b value in order to get movement so if i were to start here at x y um, to translate the point by an order pair AB, we add A to the X coordinate and B to the Y coordinate. So if we're starting here and we want to move it some place, we would add A and B, whatever that value is. This will make more sense when we have some examples. Over here, a dilation of a point or of an entire figure is going to be somewhat of a multiple, right? So we start off with KY but to dilate the whole thing. And this is, this is really strange because we're looking at a point, but we would multiply each point by a particular, um, I'm gonna call it a scalar, um, a scale factor. So we would multiply it by K and we would get another, um, another not another point, but another shape, like, cause you'd have to do all the points. So it's a little bit weird when we're just doing one point cause the shape of the point doesn't change, but you'll get it later. And then finally, um, rotations, you can have rotations by degree, 90 degree rotation. Let's think about what's happening here. We start with X, Y, a 90 degree rotation will bring us to negative Y, negative X, and a 180 degree. So a 90 degree rotation brings us here, a 180 degree rotation brings us here, which is going to give us negative X and negative Y. Um, all right, so let's look at example two. Here we have a parallelogram that has the following vertices. So given these um, points that are the vertices, the corners of a parallelogram, we're going to figure out what happens when this parallelogram is reflected over the x-axis, and we're going to find the coordinates to this image. So in this way, A, B, C, D, the original, is going to be our pre-image. So for this, we don't have to draw a picture, but I figure we should draw a picture to kind of get us an idea of what's going on and kind of think through where the, um, the orientation of the reflection will be. Okay, so here's our pre-image. And when we think about a reflection over the x-axis, this being the x-axis, right? And this being our y-axis, let me jot that down. We're thinking about having points that align, right? Points that align with the other points, but are on the opposite side. So we're, I know that sounds crazy, but hopefully it makes sense. So I'm going to put this down here at three. Okay, so now let's just use a different color to make it fancy. And here's our picture. And then we're going to talk about what the points are. So here's our picture. When we do this, we would map each point. So this point A is now called A prime. We put a little slide dash right there. This is D prime because it's the, the image of D. This is C prime and this is B prime. All right, and we use a little slash right there. So now let's think about the coordinates of it, right? The coordinates of C, let's start with C, is 0, 1. The coordinates of C prime would be 0, negative 1. Look at what's happening. The coordinates of B is 1, 3, right? The coordinates of 
B prime is one negative three. Well, what's happening? Notice that when we do a reflection over, in this case, the X axis, we're going to be changing only the Y value. So A prime has a coordinate pair of negative four, negative three. You see, we're changing the sign of the Y value. B prime has a coordinate, um, coordinate values of three, um, I'm sorry, that was just off, of one and negative three. Stay with me, stay with me, trust me, I got you. And then C prime, we talked about, is zero, negative one, and D prime is, um, let's see, where was D prime? Negative five, negative one. So even without drawing the picture, if we thought through it, we could definitely have gotten those answers, gotten those other vertices. And as you can see in part B, we're asked to graph the parallelogram, which we did to help us actually answer the question. But as I mentioned before, we didn't have to graph it first. And so we graphed it and we graphed its image and we wrote A prime, B prime, D prime, D prime. All right, let's look at another example. So here we got a translation in example three. Triangle ABC has the following vertices. Find the coordinates of the vertices of the image if it is translated three units to the left and two units down. So if we're going three units to the left and two units down, instead of adding on, we're actually going to be subtracting, right? So A prime is going to be negative two. So the left, if I start at negative two on the x-axis and I'm gonna translate three units to the left, I'm actually gonna subtract three. So negative two minus three is going to be my a term, and then my, um, is gonna be the x-coordinate of my a term rather, and then positive three, now I'm going down, minus two is gonna be the y term. And so the vertices of a prime would be given as negative five, positive one. The vertices of B prime, let's get that together, ends up being one, negative two. And finally, the coordinates of C prime would be negative one, negative seven. And again, we're getting that from just subtracting for the X term three and subtracting two from the Y term. And so I'll just highlight the answers to each of these by uh, circling the final answer. And then finally, we're asked to graph ABC and its image. So here is our pre-image, triangle ABC, and here's the image A prime, B prime, and C prime, all right? So let's see what we got. Here we have the opportunity to discuss dilation, and we're gonna find the coordinates of a dilated um, trapezoid. Trapezoid is a four-sided figure where opposite, one pair of opposite sides are parallel. So we're gonna find the image of the, um, the yeah, the image of a trapezoid, L, M, L, L prime, M prime, n prime, p prime, if the scale factor, that's that k value we talked about before, is 3 fourths. And ultimately what we're going to do to find, let's say, l prime is take the original value of l and multiply each term by 3 fourths because that's the scale factor. And when I do that, what I end up with is negative 3, right, because 3 over four times negative four, the fours cancel out, I'm left with like a negative one. If you don't like that, you can talk about three times negative four is negative 12. Negative 12 divided by four is three. Three fourths times one is just three fourths. And yes, you can have fractional um, coordinates for your ordered pair. So that's what L prime is. And similarly, if we did the same thing, multiplying three fourths by each of the terms, we would get the following result. So here's the result we would get. And you know, I want you to just know that if you're having trouble multiplying those fractions, let me know. Here it might look a little bit dubious with P. Um, P prime is gonna be negative three times three over four, which is negative nine fourths. And here I just reduced these guys by two and realize that if I divide two in here and two here, I get a negative three times three over two. And also if I did negative six times three negative 18 and then reduce that, I'd get negative nine over two. So the graphing of the pre-image and its image will have to wait. I know that we can do it, but I'm gonna skip that for now. And I'm gonna go on to this um, last example here. And so in example, in triangle X, Y, Z, it has these vertices. We're gonna talk about the rotation. And the rotation of 90 degrees takes the xy term, flips it, and changes the sign on the x, so we're on the y. So we'll do that now. 
the vertice of x is going to be negative 5, positive 1. Notice we switched and changed the sign on that original y value. We get negative 2, 5 for y prime. And finally, we get negative 2, negative 1 for the z prime value. I'm going to stop here, and I won't make a second video to show you the graphing because I know you can do it. Let me know if you have any questions. I look forward to talking.